The story happened a couple years ago at my work in the Netherlands. At the time, I had just started working as a security officer in an office building. The building was secluded in a forest area, away from any busy streets. It honestly creeped me out a bit, but the job itself would be easy, since it's pretty much in the middle of nowhere. Nonetheless, it was work, and I was desperate to take anything that put money in my pocket. Once I started, a supervisor worked with me for the first week, teaching me what to do, and generally just showing me around the place. The building was huge. After I completed my training week, I was scheduled to work the first night by myself. I drove to work and took the shift over from my colleague at 9pm. He told me there were still some people left in the building, but they'd be leaving soon. Before starting my 15th floor patrol, I closed the main lobby entrance so you'd only be able to exit when you're inside, and no outsiders would be able to come in. I eventually made my way up to the 15th floor, after patrolling through every other level. The few people left up there were packing up and ready to go, so I headed back down to the main floor with them. For my first round on my own, it went well. I went back to the front desk, and it was now around 11.30. The last guy walked out and wished me a good night. Once he left, I went back up to the 15th floor, checked all the offices, and locked it down. I went down to my front desk again, where I turned on the motion detector alarms. They were on every level, including every door that led outside. Within five minutes after putting the alarm on, the alarm on the 10th floor went off. Since I was the only one left in the building, it creeped me out, but then again, I signed up for this. The rules if an alarm goes off, you call the security company before you take action. I told them I would investigate the alarm and call them back once I checked it out. Otherwise, if I didn't call back, they would send a police car to check it out as a precaution. I checked the entire 10th floor and found nothing. I made my way back down to the lobby to tell them it was a false alarm. Well, over the course of the next hour, the alarm on the 10th floor went off five more times. Every time I checked the floor, I couldn't find anything. It was definitely freaking me out, but I started to settle down, realizing that the sensor probably just needed to be replaced. Since this was my first day working alone, and the alarm went off so many times, the security company thought I was screwing things up and wanted to file a complaint to my boss. That meant I would probably lose my job I've only had for a week. In retrospect, this was dumb of me, but because the alarm went off again, I didn't bother to tell security since I'd already had several false alarms in the span of an hour. I went up to the 10th floor again. The only thing I had on me was a mag light or flashlight, depending on where you're from. I went up to the 10th floor, checked around, and just like every time before, I found nothing. I really wanted to see it for myself, so I could at least confirm that it was a faulty sensor causing this. This time, I turned off the lights and stayed on the 10th floor, listening and watching for anything unusual. Within about 5 minutes, I heard something moving. My fists clenched, and I quickly felt droplets of sweat forming on my forehead. My initial assumption was now wrong, as I realized there was something or someone else on the floor. I turned on all the lights and tried to sound as manly as possible, saying something in the line of, I know there's someone here, show yourself. As you can imagine, there was no response. I slowly walked closer and closer to the sound, where I realized it was coming from an office. I opened the door, turned on the lights, and found a little girl who couldn't have been older than 13 with long brown hair wearing white pajamas. She was squatting on top of a desk, rocking back and forth, looking straight at me. The scary thing was that there was no emotion in her face or in her eyes. I couldn't explain it, but I felt this terrible energy in her that made me want to turn the other way and run, but I collected my nerves and took the girl by the hand. I walked her down to the front desk, offered her a coke, but she didn't respond whatsoever. The only thing I could do was call my supervisor and tell him about what I had encountered. I explained the situation to him, and he said, Stay right there. Don't let her leave. I'm on my way. When I hung up the phone, I continued to have a really bad feeling about this girl. There was something really wrong with her. It was also strange. Before my supervisor turned up, he called me and told me to call Mental Asylum, which is a few miles away from the office building, just to check if someone was missing. So that's what I did. I called the asylum. I asked them if there was someone missing. I gave them a description of the girl sitting next to me, and it matched the description of the girl who was missing from the asylum. Then, the woman who answered became very serious in her tone. Do not take your eyes off of her. She is really dangerous. You need to be careful. Well, fast forward to a week later. My supervisor told me the story of the girl I found since he talked with the people from the asylum. It turns out, 
The little girl killed her mom, dad, and little brother while they were all asleep when she was 11. Even in the asylum, she wounded staff members, either by stabbing them with a pencil or in one case, biting part of someone's ear off. My supervisor also mentioned that the girl was armed with a box cutter on the night I found her. To this day, we still have no clue how she ever came into the building. We checked all the cameras, and there was no footage of her entering the building. It still remains to be a mystery to all of us. I remember feeling sick in my stomach, while tears ran down my cheeks. I was sitting in my car, on the side of the highway around midnight, in between two major cities in Europe. Maybe less than an hour earlier, I fought bitterly with my girlfriend. We got mad at each other and had an argument. I couldn't stand it, so I got my keys, slammed the door, and drove off to my apartment a couple cities over. I had to take a break during my drive home. The episode with my girlfriend woke up emotions that were far too great for me to ignore. So I stood there on the side of the highway with the hazards on and the car shut off. It was silent around me, except the occasional truck passing by and the constant clicking of the blinking light. My body was tight, and in my mind, I ran through the events again and again. It was so unpleasant, and I didn't want to think about it, so I decided to get back in the car and continue driving. As I got in, I turned the key, but it wouldn't start. I continued to fumble around with it, turning it back and forth, until the key got stuck. I was stubborn and kept trying to get it out, but it wouldn't budge. Thoughts of staying the night on the highway rushed to the forefront of my thoughts. I foolishly forgot to grab my cell phone as I was storming out of the apartment while arguing with my girlfriend. I had no means to contact an emergency service or roadside assistance. Now the clicking of the blinking light was like a constant blow with a sledgehammer to my head. I shut it off. For the first time, I realized how dark it was around me. Trucks passed me by within the following minutes, but I did not want to step out of my car and wave one of the drivers down. I didn't trust them. Since I didn't have any other options, I stepped out of my car when it conveniently just started raining. Obviously, I knew where I was, since I regularly drive on that highway back and forth. I knew there was an exit a couple kilometers up the road, so I figured I'd walk on the side until I reached it. I knew there was a gas station, but I wasn't sure if it was 24 hours. I closed my car door shut and began walking on the other side of the guardrail, away from the road. The trees closest to me on the right side were illuminated by the moonlight, casting a shadowy glow deep into the woods. I have to confess, it really freaked me out. I had no particular reason to be afraid, but my mind turned the shadows into whatever I pictured in my imagination. After 15 minutes or so, I began to move up a small hill and the rain turned to snow. It was snowing for a while there because the ground was already covered in white. I ended up reaching the exit much sooner, realizing I miscalculated the distance, but that was alright. I was happy to be close to light, people, and a phone I could use. Right before the exit, there was a bridge that went over the highway. When I was about to pass under the bridge, I saw a person jogging on it. I stopped and looked up in surprise. I only made out a silhouette, yet I clearly saw a woman crossing the bridge. Who would want to jog after midnight on a road close to a highway with a wooded area on both sides? A few seconds later, she was gone. I looked to see if I could make her out within the darkness, but I couldn't. Still weirded out, I continued walking and passed under the bridge. Now, in order to take the exit by foot, I had to jump over the guardrail because there were thick bushes too close on that side that I was on. On the right side of me, behind the bushes, there was a trail. If you decided to walk up that trail, you'd arrive back at the bridge I mentioned. I slowly walked down the exit, trying not to fall, and then it happened. Out of nowhere, someone jumped on me from behind and pushed me face first to the ground in the middle of the road. I screamed in sudden terror and turned around, ignoring the pain in my chin and right ear. The person was already on their feet again. I screamed again in shock when I realized it was the same woman that was crossing the bridge. She shrieked and with wide, crazy eyes and saliva dripping out of her mouth, she charged at me again. Suddenly, I felt a sharp pain in my left eye. The woman scratched over my eyes and poked her fingers deep into my left eyeball. I stumbled backwards, and when she was running at me again, I was able to trip her into the guardrail. I broke down in the middle of the road, clutching my left eye. Moments passed, and I wasn't attacked again. Against all pain in my eye, I looked up, and through tears in both of my eyes, I saw the woman heading up the trail towards the bridge again. Adrenaline shot through my body. The pain felt numb as I rushed down the exit road, slipping and falling over several times during the process. 
I was terrified and only cared about getting out of there. When I finally reached the gas station, I basically threw myself into the door, opening it up. The guy behind the counter was shocked, seeing me all beat up and bloody. Unsurprisingly, the police were never able to find the woman. I was living in a quiet, largely suburban town last year, maybe 10 miles outside of the city. At the time, I walked to and from work, since it was only a few miles away from my house, and it was a quiet walk through mostly unpopulated areas. There is one stretch of road towards the end of the walk that can be fairly unnerving at night. In the eight months that I've lived there, I never had a problem or encountered anyone strange at all. One night, after work, around 9pm, I stopped at a restaurant to get some food and relax. Afterwards, I continued my walk for the last mile home. The creepy road I mentioned before has two lanes on each side and a guardrail. The surrounding area is flat, barren, and surrounded by woods. It's a straight shot for about a quarter mile, so you can see what's ahead for the most part. A major highway runs above, so there's an overpass bridge to walk under. Fortunately, it's dimly lit and has no area for people to hide, like some bridges have. I walked down the road and through the bridge with no issues. It was strangely quiet, even for a weeknight. There were no cars out, even on the highway above. By the time I'd left the restaurant, it was approaching 11 p.m., so for a small town, that wasn't really a surprise. Just beyond the bridge, I saw a male figure saunter out from behind an unlit, defunct gas station on the other side of the highway. At first, I thought he was just drunk and needed to take care of business behind the building after drinking all night and watching a game. I kept walking, keeping my eyes on him. We were about 40 feet away from each other when he decided to cross the highway over to my side. As he sauntered across, he started to drift diagonally in my direction, very slightly. I promptly began to cross over to the side he had come from, not taking my eyes off of him for a second. As we both reached the double line of the road, I realized that he drifted close enough that there were about 15 feet between us, and of course, no one was in sight. It was completely silent and dark. A couple streetlights illuminated the road from a few hundred feet in the distance. Then, he turned to face me and took two steps toward me. At times like these, with no warning, during those split seconds, different people do different things that are completely out of our control. Some people freeze, some people scream, some people run. Through no will of my own, I happen to be someone who yells at the top of my lungs. Surprising myself, I leaned toward him, pointed at him, and yelled, get out of here, at the top of my lungs. He froze, then immediately turned and walked away. Not moving my eyes from him, I continued to cross the street to the other side. All this happened in just a few seconds. I hung back to watch him walk about 100 feet before I was ready to trail behind him from the other side of the road. My panic subsided, and I continued. I was now just a street away from my house. I continued watching him as he headed toward another gas station just across from my street. He put his hands on the windowsill and faced the building, staring down at his feet. I approached my street, which is conveniently directly across from where he was. There were only about a hundred yards left until I was at my house. I tried to disappear into the shadows at one side of the street, so he wouldn't be able to see me from the gas station. Every three to five seconds, as I walked, I'd look back until the road curved and I could no longer see him. I still kept checking, nothing. As I was halfway down the road, I did another head check, and what I saw set my adrenaline into overdrive. He was at the end of my road, running at me, fast. That's when I really panicked. I had no conscious control over what my body was doing. I had no time to think, but found myself sprinting faster than I'd ever run in my entire life. I never looked back, but knew he must be gaining ground quickly. I'm a small female, so I probably can't outrun any man. I pushed harder and harder then began to turn the bend where my house was in view. My heart felt like it was going to explode out of my chest. The fear I felt was purely indescribable. That's when I dropped my keys and phone out of my hand. I had approximately zero time to decide what to do, but it's amazing what happens in panic mode. Every option was instantly weighed in my head. If I went to pick it up, I would close some distance between us, but I'd be able to get inside my house and call someone. If I don't pick up, I'd save time and distance, but maybe locked out if my roommate isn't home and will have to hide in the neighborhood and hope he doesn't find me. I lunged back, then grabbed the keys and phone, and turned to power sprint the last 70 or so feet to my house. Thankfully, despite my sheer horror and shakiness, I was able to get inside and immediately lock the door behind me, and lock myself upstairs as I sobbed profusely. 
My heart didn't stop racing for the next half hour. I'll never know what would have happened if he got close enough to grab me, but I won't have to find out. However, just when I thought this was the end of it, I woke up to my bike being stolen out of the garage the next morning. It really makes me wonder how many times he watched me walk back home before. That was the last time I ever walked alone at night.